my name is Laura Penny Bade. I'm the parish associate here at Bethany Presbyterian Church. And I'm delighted to welcome you to this worship experience for Sunday, January 31st, offered by Bethany Presbyterian Church of Lafayette, Indiana, in partnership with Elston Presbyterian Church, also of Lafayette, and Memorial Presbyterian Church of Dayton, Indiana. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship today and pray that you will indeed be blessed by this experience. We pray that you are being staying safe and well. And for the foreseeable future, we invite you to continue worshiping with us virtually as our congregations have suspended in-person worship at this time out of concern for the safety and well-being of us all. These are difficult times for everyone. For many, our first thought is looking out for our children. But who is looking out for foster children? We are. We are CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates. Our volunteers work one-on-one -on -one with foster children to make sure they are well protected and get the services they need. Especially when times are tough, we all have to take responsibility for every child. Please support CASA during this critical time. Please join me now in the responsive call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord with your whole heart. In the company of the congregation. The Lord is gracious and merciful, ever mindful of the covenant. The works of God's hands are faithful and just, established forever and ever. Holy and awesome is God's name. 
God's praise endures forever. the one who pardons, heals, and strengthens all who repent, calls us to name our failings and our hopes. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Please join me in praying the unison prayer of confession. You have shown us, O oh God, what it means to follow you. Forgive us when we fail. Open our hearts and minds to your teachings. You molded compassion in the person of Jesus Christ, but we do not extend kindness to strangers or friends. You challenge systems of injustice through the movement of your spirit, but we keep choosing comfort over justice, the status quo over the kingdom of God. You create all things good, and your creation sings your praise. But we consider no creatures but ourselves, and wound your earth by our sin. Forgive us, O God. Pour your compassion on us this day, and by your forgiveness, show us how to share it with one another. The psalmist assures us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us, even pursue us all the days of our life. As God's forgiven people, receive this goodness and mercy and live a new life in the grace of Jesus Christ. Because we know God's grace through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, we also know God's peace. And so now let us share that peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. 
and also with you. During this time of pandemic and having to keep our distance from one another, it is difficult to share the peace, at least in the ways to which we are accustomed. But I invite you to share Christ's peace now within your home, within your immediate surroundings, with those you love and who are nearby. Share God's peace out into the world. Join me now in the spirit of prayer. Holy Spirit, your people call out for understanding. Bring to our yearning hearts and minds the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. The Gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Hebrew lesson for this morning is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A new teaching with authority. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Join with me now in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and holy God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you who are our strength and our Redeemer. In the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise ye the Lord! Hallelujah! Yep, that's how it starts. That's the beginning of Psalm 111. The Hebrew word hallelujah, which is translated in the NRSV as praise the Lord, is a combination of the word hallel, which means praise, with the word yah, which is a short form of Yahweh, the name of God. Together, they mean praise Yahweh, or praise the Lord. As hallel is in the second person plural imperative, it indicates an exhortation that is a positive command or instruction directed towards others. In other words, as today's reading starts with a hallelujah, 
It begins with a call to the people to praise the Lord. The NIV rendering of hallelujah as praise the Lord, all you people, I think does a better job of capturing the corporate nature of the word hallelujah. Additionally, the psalmist indicates that he, as it was likely the man who composed the psalm, will give thanks in the company of the upright, in the congregation, further emphasizing the communal nature of praising God. And further, the psalm instructs us that praise is to be offered to the Lord with our whole heart. So no half-hearted praise here, just wholehearted, all-out acclamation of God. There sure is a whole lot of praise going on here in Psalm 111. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes these days I'm not feeling very inspired to lift up a wholehearted hallelujah. With the World Health Organization reporting close to 2.2 million deaths worldwide due to the pandemic, did you hear that? 2.2 million. And the loss of over 425,000 American lives. Honestly, it's hard to feel like breaking out of praise. Most of us gathered here today or, or watching this service virtually, we've been touched by the death of someone we know. And if we haven't yet, the reality is that before this is over, we will most likely lose someone dear to us. My full-time ministry is in the senior community of Westminster Village, and we have a, a tradition or a way of honoring those that we have lost. Near the front desk, a flower is placed, and the person's picture is posted up with the date of their death. And I have to tell you, after the, over the past month or so, there have been far too many flowers and far too many pictures displayed. So sometimes, when I'm feeling weighed down by the reality of our pandemic-riddled world, or I get mired in the constant reports of pr police brutality toward people of color, and political unrest, and the propagation of mistruths and hate, I find it helpful to take a breath and step back for a moment and to take in the big picture. This is, in fact, what Psalm 111 does. It gives a, a big picture view. When we initially read Psalm 111 through the lens of our 21st century American eyes of white privilege, it's, it's easy to miss the many illusions that would have been readily apparent to the Israelites of the past, as well as to modern Jews when they recite this psalm. The psalm maps out the big picture of God's interaction with God's creation and God's people. The words of this psalm would have reminded the Israelites of the founding story of Israel, the story of how God did so many different things, how, how God rescued them from enslavement in Egypt and, and led them safely through the desert and fed them with manna. How God gave them laws to shape their corporate life, their life together as God's people. And then how God led them into their home, the promised land. Year after year after year, the story has been told in the liturgy of Israel. Every time the people heard it, they were reminded once again who they were as a people, why God had called them, and what God had called them to be. This story shaped their lives, which is why it was so important for them to come back to it again and again. Today, as we ponder the story of God's provision for the Israelites, it can also help us followers of Christ to look at the big picture of God's salvation story. As Christians, we too have been delivered from slavery. We have been delivered from enslavement to sin. Because of the Lord's love for us, the cross and the resurrection of Christ deliver us through the life and death and resurrection of Christ. We've been set free from guilt and fear. And in the gospel, 
we find a new connection with God, a new strength to do God's will, and a new hope for the future. As the Israelites were sustained in the desert by the provision of manna from heaven, we too are sustained by God on a daily basis. We are fed during the celebration of the Eucharist, the communion of God's people at the table that Christ has prepared. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never be thirsty. Christ himself is our nourishment on our desert journey. We celebrate the continuing presence of Jesus on our journey and are especially thankful for his presence with us when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. As the Israelites were given instruction by God, so too do we receive God's instruction, which shapes our life together as God's people. In addition to the scriptures, or through the scriptures as well, we have the life of Jesus to guide us. He lived among us, and showed us by action and words how we are to live our lives. Jesus gives us a picture of what, of what God is like, what God wants for and from us. Christ's teachings spell out what it looks like to be a people who love God with all of their heart and soul, mind and strength, and what it means to love our neighbors as ourselves. God fulfilled the divine promise and led the Israelites into the promised land. Every day God leads us out into the world to be God's emissaries, to share the good news with a word that world that is so hurting. As we share the gospel and call others to follow Jesus, the whole world, in a sense, becomes God's promised land. So let me ask you, did you hear, I mean, did you really hear some of the amazing things that God has done for God's people? Allow yourselves to be captivated, to be awed by all that God continues to do for God's people. Ponder all that God has done for you and for those you know and love. Deliverance, guidance, provision, participation in the kingdom of God. This, my friends, is an amazing heritage. So perhaps, perhaps we're feeling a bit more like praising God now. When we look at things from this perspective, with the amazing stories of God's provision throughout history and for us in mind, we can see that indeed there is much to praise God about. And perhaps we can even see our way to praising God, to raising a hallelujah, even in the midst of these trying times. And so as we commit to raising a hallelujah to the living Lord, let's try to do the following. First, may we focus on God, not our current situation, not our current circumstances. In just these ten verses, this psalm provides a litany of God's wondrous works, righteousness, mercy, compassion, provision, establishing a people, ruling with truth and justice. It helps to look beyond what is happening in our world to what God is doing. Great are the works of the Lord, the psalmist reminds us in verse 2. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The works of God's hands are faithful and just. And even when we have good reason to lament, we can be thankful for God's mercy and provision for ourselves, for our community, and yes, even the wider, wider world with all of its trouble. We can give thanks because we trust and believe that God still reigns. 
And second, let's give God our wholehearted praise. As I suggested earlier, God doesn't want a weak mumble of thanks out of habit or duty, but a wholehearted, full body shout out, whoop, of thanks. Now, I know that doesn't come naturally to most of us Presbyterians, but friends, go for it. It feels good. Put your body into it. It's as if the psalmist's heart is so full of praise that he can't contain it. It wells up in his inner being and releases a flood of praise. Now, I can't help wonder what would happen if we allowed ourselves to praise God in such an exuberant way. And finally, share thanks and praise of God with others. Remember how in the first verse the psalmist refers to giving thanks in the company of the upright in the congregation? Praising God is meant to be experienced and shared with others, as is evident even in the very word hallelujah, as we discussed earlier. And what's more, all of God's good gifts are meant to be shared. Food and sustenance, covenant mercy, compassion, honesty, justice, redemption. I started this message with a hallelujah, just the way Psalm 111 begins. And the theme of praise is also reflected in the final verse of the psalm where it says, God's praise endures forever. Just as God's provision, mercy, and grace endure forever, so ought we to continually praise the living God. I love the way that Cameron B.R. Howard puts it in her commentary on the text. She says this, When all else fails, praise God. When all succeeds, praise God. In everything, praise God. Friends, we can't go wrong by praising God. So no matter what is happening in our lives or in our world, let's praise the Lord with our whole hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hello, friends. Today I'll be sharing with you one of my favorite songs, Good, Good Father. And it's just such a worshipful song. I hope you feel like joining along.
Please join me now in affirming what we believe, saying together the unison affirmation of faith. God's, God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Friends, join with me now in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray for the needs of the world, saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the healing of the earth and all its creatures, may we be stewards of the earth as if our lives depended upon it. Hear us, O God, your mercy is is great. For the church's willingness to cast out demons in its midst, for congregations that are in turmoil, for the healing of divisions between the followers of Christ Jesus, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For leaders of nations, for those who have great wealth, for those who have too much power, for those who have destructive weapons, and for those who have none. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those who are victims of others' idolatry, for children who have no one to listen to their cries for food and shelter, for parents who cannot answer the needs of their children, for peacemakers and diplomats, for those who give through charities and for those who use the law to make policies for the greater good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all who are in pain and in need of care, especially those we name before you now silent. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For the wisdom to fear you rightly, the power to withstand changes in our own lives that bring us closer to you, for the ability to give thanks for the people who have brought us to this time, our ancestors, teachers, pastors, and the martyrs of every age. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands we commend all those for whom we pray, and those it would be easy to forget. We ask your blessing on all your people, that we may come at last to the truth around your banquet table that has no end. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now we pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, do not let idols grow and multiply in your hands, but give of yourselves your time and your possessions out of love for this creation and honor toward what you have been given. Friends, again, the gospel of Christ demands a response from us. 
And so I pray that you would respond with a changed life, with some new direction, with some act of charity, with some sharing of the resources God has entrusted to your care. If part of your response might be a contribution to one of the three congregations hosting this worship experience, you may do that by using the information that is on your screen at this time. Either the Bethany Presbyterian Church, the Elston Presbyterian Church, or the Memorial Presbyterian Church of Dayton. However you choose to respond, may we show our appreciation for what God has given us. May we be a blessing to others in God's name. Amen. together, praising the living God with your whole heart, mind, and strength. 
And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace now and forevermore. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.